we are going to record this just in case there's some fabulous moments. Hello, Rudolph. Welcome. Lovely to see you. Okay. All right. So is there anybody who would like to kick off? Anybody who would want to start off with a question? You are welcome to start now. Adrian, let's go for it. All right. So I don't have a question, but what I would like to say is, I think it was two or three days ago, I actually had, I'm sure that maybe some of you had some sessions with um, Sonia before us, but um, it's been really amazing because I've been struggling to figure something out and for the life of me, I couldn't. And I had one of the one hour sessions and I figured out something so profound that I literally woke up today and I'm a completely different person. I literally looked at the world that I've been living in for years and it's like this whole curtain's been drawn back. So these are some very good things to invest in. I speak from personal experience. I'm not going to go into all of that, but kind of like the real deal, quite legitimate. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Yes, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. And you know, sometimes when we are within our own experience it's it's standing very close to the mirror you know and and it's very challenging to get a objective perspective of what is going on so it often helps to just have someone that can reflect and then just um so one of the, the things that i am very very gifted at is to hear limiting beliefs this is really one of my my strengths you know to tune into the vibration um, of what we hear and then take you to the bottom belief that is creating this reality because your life is basically what you believe you you have to understand that the entire world is exactly what you think it is the world will be exactly what you think it is and now i just want you to take a moment what do you think about the world what do you think the world is and if you have to 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 be honest with yourself some of us feels and think that this place is very hard, it's very challenging. Um, you know, uh, we, we feel like th this is a school and I'm never gonna pass. And whatever you think the world is, that is the proof that you will experience. And so where we have to start is what we think. Now you have this beautiful, magnificent instrument, your, your mind, that has been given to you as a gift. It is, however, only an instrument. It does not define you or your worth or your value. The same as your body. This body is a beautiful tool, also a gift that you get to use on this planet. Okay, but it doesn't define you or your worth or your value. And it is very important to understand that we all have received this amazing instrument. And it's just like, imagine it's like a piano. Okay, anyone can go up to a piano and play the piano and press a few notes and Tom, 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 tom. But it's the one who takes the time to first of all understand the instrument and then spend some time with that instrument and then really be dedicated, disciplined to practice on a daily basis. Okay, that will eventually play the most beautiful music on that instrument. So a lot of us really already know so many things. In truth, I don't think that there's going to be something that I'm probably going to share with you that you don't know already. And if you don't know it, something might just resonate in you and you go like, ah, oh, I know this, ah, oh, I know this. But knowing has never changed anything for anybody. Knowing something doesn't change your reality. I know how to split. Okay, I've seen many footage about it. I've seen how to do it. I've heard people talk about it. I know which muscles to, to train. I know what exactly what I need to do in order to split. But if I do not spend time every single day training my muscles, stretching my muscles, okay, I'm not going to be able to split. I can't split. <laughs> when I was a child, I got, I got pretty close, close to it. But it, it does take dedication and it does take commitment. And your instrument, um, imagine it's like a space center. And thoughts is spaceships, let's just imagine it like this. 
and you have spaceships coming in and out and in and out. And, and sometimes for us, it feels like we have no control over this space center, right? Things are just happening, but it's not like that. You are the space center and you decide, you have the free will choice to decide which spaceships are going to come in and which ones are going to go out. Okay. And that power is within you and that takes practice. So first of all, you need to become aware and conscious of what is coming in and what is going out. So you need to pay attention. You have to start learning and practicing and spend time with your mind to see what is actually going on in my mind. Okay. How do I react to things? What is my daily thought process? And this takes time. If you want to get to know somebody really, really well, if you just meet someone and you fall in love and, and, and getting to know this person, you need to spend time with this person, right? You've got to spend time with this person. And you might even know this person for, for, for years and then new things will, will uh, and, and you'll say, I don't know you anymore. This is not the person I know, you know? And the same will happen to you. Just as you think you know your mind, something new will pop up and you'll have to, um, you know, come face to face with that part of you. And everybody in the world, every single human being that you interact with and that you meet will introduce you to a new part of you that you have not yet met. They will bring their energy into your space and introduce you to a part that you have not met. What that means is that everyone is just reflecting to you a part of you. But none of these versions, none of these versions that you will interact and come to, to meet is who you truly are, okay? It is important to understand that there is every version that you can possibly imagine of you out there already. Just think about that for a little bit. Now, we live on a plane of existence where time exists. There's a past, there's a future. But the truth is, there is none of that. The past, the future, time collapses in this all that is energy that we are all a part of. Okay? And that is why so many teachers, so many gurus will encourage you to come to this moment. Be present, be in the moment. All your power lies in this moment. Okay? What does that actually mean? You cannot change anything in the future or in the past. But did you know that you can actually change the past and change the future in this moment? If everything is happening simultaneously, just imagine that for a little bit. Then you have the power in this moment to change it. And how do we change the future and the past? Through our thoughts. Your thoughts are powerful forces. Okay. So can you see how incredibly important your thoughts are? What you focus on, that is what grows. What you believe is what you become. What you believe is what you will see in your reality. The world will be exactly as you think it is. And with that, I would just like to start a meditation. I would like for you to become quiet and let's connect with that quantum reality. Let's connect with the energy of all creation. Okay. And once we're in that beautiful, beautiful space, okay, I would like for you to just witness how everything comes and goes. Okay. Thoughts, feelings, but observe and become conscious of that part of you that continues to observe everything coming and going. Are you ready to join me in this? Okay. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. So I'm just going to encourage you to close your eyes and take a nice deep breath in for me. And as you exhale, just use your sound and just let go of the day. Ah, let's do a nice big sigh. Breathing in love and light. And exhale. Ah. With every exhale, we are just releasing all the stresses and the worries of the day. Breathing in love and light. Exhaling, release. 
breathing in love and light. Exhaling, release. Now take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale now, I want you to imagine the energy going into Mother Earth, through your feet, and then just connect your energy with Mother Earth as part of all that is. And then I want you to imagine, gather energy from Mother Earth and breathe it back up into your body, breathe it up and just zip that energy up, 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 through all your chakras, roots, sacral, solar plexus, part your heart, your throat, your third eye to your crown, breathing in. Breathing out. And I want you to start focusing just in between your eyes. I want you to imagine you can see the beautiful light of your essence, the core of your being. And imagine you could see the color of your essence, the color of this light, this energy that you are. It doesn't have to be one color, it can be multicolors. And this can change, it doesn't have to always stay the same. And as you see this magnificent light, that just for this moment represents your core, your being, your essence, I want to invite you to take a deep breath in and breathe into that light and imagine it expanding to your whole face. Breathe in some more and feel it going to your scalp. Feel the tingling sensation as energy is moving. Breathing some more into that beautiful light. Your entire head now is lit up in that color, in that light. Breathing some more. Breathe it into your throat and into your neck. Feel that energy moving into your shoulders, down your arms, to your fingertips. Take a deep breath in. And feel the color and that light expanding to your chest, your upper back, trickling down every vertebra of your spine. Breathe it into your lungs, into your heart, middle back, lower back. Breathe it into every organ of your stomach and your gut. Feel this light. Everything is lighting up in your body. Just imagine light expanding and expanding. Breathe some more into your hips, thighs, into your knees. Continue to breathe it into your calves, into your heels, your feet, your toes. Your entire body is shining. I want you to imagine this energy is spinning, spinning, spinning like a like a twister, like a vortex, left to right, left to right, left to right. Spinning from your feet all the way upwards to your crown. Breathe it in, breathe it out. It's just energy moving. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, I want you to imagine this energy expanding now around your body. Swirling around. And then coming back into your heart. And then from your heart, swirling out. With every in-breath, you bring the energy in. And with every out-breath, you expand the energy outwards. Breathing in. Breathing out. I want you to feel how you become one and part with the chair that you're sitting on. Feel the energy just swirling around. Back and forth. No separation between you and the chair. It's just energy moving back and forth. I want you to take a deep breath in. As you exhale, I want you to imagine expanding your consciousness now to the entire room that you're in. And just feel the energy moving outwards and backwards. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And feel how you become one and part with everything in the room. No separation. Just energy moving back and forth. Breathe it in. And as you exhale now, expand your consciousness to the entire room or house that you're in. To the neighborhood. And then 
bring it back for the in-breath. Exhale. Breathe it in. And I want you to breathe it in and then expand it to the whole city that you're in. Everything is becoming that beautiful light. No separation, just one is just energy moving back and forth, back and forth. Breathe in the city. And as you exhale, expand it now to the whole continent that you're on. Imagine that you are one and part of all the rivers, the oceans, the animals, the plants, the trees. It is all within you and you are within it. Only energy moving back and forth, back and forth. No separation, just oneness. Breathe in the entire continent. And as you exhale, expand your consciousness now to Mother Earth. Imagine Mother Earth is within you, just like you are within Mother Earth. Only energy moving back and forth, back and forth. I want you to imagine you can hear the heartbeat, the rhythm of Mother Earth. I'm inviting you to synchronize your heart with the rhythm of Mother Earth and feel your, your heartbeat slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. No separation, just once. Breathe in Mother Earth. And as you exhale now, expand your consciousness into the universe. Feel yourself becoming one and part with all the planets, the stars, the moon, the sun. It's all within you and you are within. No separation. This one. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And as we continue, you feel yourself going into a deeper and deeper state of relaxation. As energy moves in and out, back and forth. Take a deep breath in. Now expand your consciousness beyond the universe. Expand your consciousness beyond the universe. And feel yourself becoming one and part with all the dimensions, the degrees, the levels, all the planes of existence. You feel energy moving back and forth, back and forth. No separation, just one. Energy moving back and forth, back and forth. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Take a deep breath in. And now expand this beautiful consciousness of yours beyond what beyond the universe into the laws of the universe. That gives us the illusion that we are here. Law of magnetism, the law of karma, the law of cause and effect. The law of attraction, the law of vibration, the law of life, the law of compassion. And feel and see that it is all within you and you are within it. No separation, just oneness. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And as you exhale now, expand your consciousness beyond the laws of the universe into the all that is energy of creation. Into the quantum realm. Some may refer to this as God, source, divine love, infinite intelligence. Just feel yourself one and part with this beautiful, Love, pure consciousness, pure awareness. And in this pulse of beingness, I want to invite you 
to witness and observe how everything comes and goes. This body that you're in will come and go. This mind will come and go. People and places will come and go. Every story that you've lived, that you've told, that you've experienced will come and go. But something remains. That's something that continues to observe everything coming and going. And as you observe everything coming and going, there might be something observing you observing everything coming and going. The true self cannot be seen. It cannot be observed. It cannot be described. It cannot be felt. It just is. Nothing else defines you your worth or your value. And first we need to remember and connect. And as you are with what is, you'll feel the boundless space of the easiest. Timeless, infinite, spaceless, shapeless, it just is. And you feel yourself relaxing deeper and deeper into this pulse of beingness, into this state of beingness that cannot be described. In this moment, there is nothing to do. Nowhere to go, nothing to achieve, nothing to become. You are already whole and complete. Relax into this stillness, into this state of being. Observe how your body will take care of itself, a miraculous healing organism designed and programmed to heal itself. Observe how everything is taken care of. In this pure space of beingness, is where you will find all the answers you desire. Infinite intelligence. It's okay. I've got it. Breathe in. Breathe it out. It is incredibly important that we access this state of beingness before we make any decisions in life so that we can act from a space of inspiration rather than desperation. With your permission, and if you would like this download, I'm going to ask the all that is energy to show us how, when, and that it is possible to access this state of being, being as easy, effortlessly. And that it is possible for you to get to this space, to this beautiful I am space, without effort.
Would you like to know what this feels like? You just have to say yes to receive a download. Yes, and I ask that we receive this in the highest and best way, with the truth and perspective of our souls. No language is known to you, every cell of your body, all belief levels, and in the highest and best way possible. So it is, and so it shall be. Breathe it in, breathe it out. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. And we ask that any question that is being asked tonight, that we will receive our information, our answers from a pure space of love. Okay. So I see a lot of the screens are off. It would be so great if I can see you guys. And then you are very, very welcome to ask me any question. I had the privilege to uh, to connect with Sandra today. Um, welcome, I'm so happy that you are here. Would you like to share your experience maybe today? Um, yeah, I had a beautiful session with, uh, with Sonia today. Um, I went not knowing the reason why I was even going. There wasn't like a specific reason why I needed to go. Um, I just felt like I needed to go see her for whatever reason. And I trusted that and I and I just went with it. And um, and it's just so beautiful how um, Creator just always, always gives you exactly what it is that you need. Um, and sometimes all you need to do is just follow your intuition and just do what you feel is right for you you know whatever your body's leading you to whatever's opening up kind of just go with that and um and sometimes you don't even need to know what the outcome is going to be or, or what's going to happen or why you're going what the reason is but just simply to follow um that feeling um of what feels right for you in that moment so we had an absolutely beautiful session um, we did a lot of release work today um i literally feel uh, like a new person um I, I felt like there was two versions of me and um, I could see that in the session that we had today. And uh, I was able to let go of an old version of me and uh, really just embrace this new version. And um, it really feels good to be in like, almost like a new skin. <laughs> and um, yeah, I um, feel a lot of excitement now and, and a lot of possibilities are opening up. And uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, it was a beautiful session. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. And you know what is so interesting because um, sometimes when we when we are here on planet Earth, it, it feels like we do not have a map, you know? If someone could just tell us what to do, which direction to go. But the truth is we do have this map. And your map is your feelings. And there are only two kinds of feelings, feelings that feels good and feelings that feels bad. Underneath those falls many different kinds of feelings, but they either feel good or they feel bad. And when you are in the state of beingness, and maybe you have now felt it, when we were in this pure space where we didn't attach to any ideas and any concepts of what we think we should be or what we are, when everything just falls away, you get to a space that really, really feels good. Okay. And in that space, you know that you are now one and part with your true self. As you move away from that true self, the further away you remove from that, the worse it will feel. And that is your map guiding you back to the true self. So any belief that you have about yourself, if that belief makes you feel good, 
then you know that you're in alignment. If that belief limits you, makes you feel bad about yourself, you're moving further and further away. Now, I often say people have this way of saying the truth hurts. It's not the truth that hurts. It is just that you believe something that is a lie about you that hurts. But the truth always feels good, inspired, expansive, whole, complete, boundless. Okay, so when we buy into a lie about ourselves, we will not feel good. And most of us buy into a lie when, when we are young, when we are children. And so when somebody makes you feel something, immediately you start believing this something. Now, you know, we don't just start believing things on a core level when we are born on Mother Earth, but we actually bring beliefs in on a genetic level. So everything that your parents believe, you sort of inherit. And then we are born onto this planet, which is a collective consciousness. So and as you are born onto Mother Earth, you inherit the consciousness of the planet. And then there is a soul level, all that you've ever been and what you've ever experienced, all that comes with beliefs. So there's much to deal with. And that is why I want to invite you to, to get to the space where you just witness everything coming and going, coming and going. Every version, I'm going to say it again, that you can imagine of you already exists. The version that you are currently experiencing is just the one that you have now tuned into. That version will come and go. And you have the free will choice to choose which version do I want to express right now. And you are a divine spark of God. And there is a divine plan for you, for your life. And the mantra that you just, if you want to, say every day, is that nothing can interfere with God's divine plan for my life. And nothing can interfere with God's divine idea of my body, of my mind. I live in, a, in an abundant universe that is generous and unconditional in its giving to me. Everything you believe about yourself, about this planet, about this world, about other people, is what you will experience. So the question is, what do you want to experience? So don't look at what already is, unless you love that. But what would you like this world to be like? And how many people take the time to sit together and say, what would I like the world? What would I want my world to feel like, to be like? If I can imagine the most amazing world, what would it feel like? Everything that you want and desire is linked to a feeling. You only want that thing because you need a feeling, because you desire a certain feeling. Correct? If you want a job with a lot of money, it is because you need one. Safety, security. That's the feeling. If you want that soulmate, it's because you don't want to be alone anymore. That's the feeling. But here is something that you should know. Everything that you want and desire, if you cannot feel the feeling now, you will not be able to bring it in. So I'm sure that there is feelings that you guys would like to feel now. So you're thinking, I want that car, or I want that soulmate, or I want that bonus, or I want that 
huge salary or I want my business to succeed or whatever it is that you want, quickly link it for me to a feeling. If I have this, then I will feel that. Can you do that for me quickly? If I have this, I will feel this. So what is the thing that in this moment you desire and you think that if you have it, it will give you this feeling? Let's have a look. Everybody got a feeling? Could you quickly tap into something that you want? And this is something that I find very interesting that when you do ask people what they want, they have no idea what they want. Because you know when we are little and we don't get what we want, it hurts so much that we decide we're going to stop feeling. In other words, I have now put my map aside and I have, I'm just aimlessly wandering around the world because I have decided not to feel anymore. And when we don't feel anymore, we feel lost. So if you're currently feeling lost and alone, aimlessly wandering around, you have detached from your feelings. And most humans become masters at not feeling. And that means they do not have a map anymore. And when you don't feel, then you don't know what you want anymore. So I really want to invite you to get back to the feeling part. Yes, sometimes when we get back to feeling, it can be a tremendous earthquake happening, especially if we haven't felt things for a very long time. But you've got to get in touch with your map again. Sonia? So, yes. So the funny thing is, um, yesterday I, um, I, I, I had this conversation and um, it was about um, a, a, a person, you know, that's going through uh, some some trauma in their marriage and um, that they, uh, you know, the, 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 the statement that was made was like, but I have the right to be angry with him because why is he doing this to me? You know, and then, so I, I, my question to her was, but who is suffering? Because, you know, there, there's so many times that we we hang on to those feelings. And I know that you've you've dealt with this and you've come across this a lot in your in your teachings. And one of the things is, is uh, that's the, your workshop that's coming up that is letting go. That's an amazing workshop. I know you'll talk about it later, but um, we, we just, we, we just, uh, it's like holding a coal, you know, and, and we just let it burn our hands instead of just dropping it. So maybe you can talk around how we move out of that position where we, we're not letting ourselves get burned. I so love that example that you used, Anne, because it often feels to us like things are happening to us. Yeah. And I have a right to be angry because this is happening to me. But the truth is that everything that is currently happening in your reality is happening because of what you believe. Okay. And when we share this information with someone, it is pretty overwhelming because they'll go, excuse me. So that person's cheating on me because of my belief system that person has betrayed me because of my belief system this i'm experiencing people cheating me people judging me people rejecting me everything is happening to me so now we're in a complete powerless state of being where we believe everything is happening to us now if i had a moment with that person i have a right to be angry with this person he is doing this to me okay I have a little exercise that I do with people. If anybody ever triggers you, makes your blood boil, something happens and you're upset about this, okay? And I'm sure we, we deal with this all the time. People come into your reality, they do something, you're upset, you react, okay? I want you to take this advice and try this little trick. Okay, and I apply it in everything that I do in my life. The first thing I ask myself is, how does this person make me feel? So maybe let's go through this little exercise. I want you to 
imagine somebody or some situation that has triggered you recently. Okay. And imagine that person and bring that person to mind. You are very welcome to close your eyes if you if you feel that you can visualize this better. And so there's a challenging person or experience in your life. Imagine they are in front of you. And you really just first thing that you always do before you do any activity, you first have to get to that place of beingness. So just relax, take a deep breath in. And let's get to that space of beingness. And now ask yourself, what is it that I'm feeling? When this person does this, how does it make me feel? So now there's feelings of anger, they frustrate me. Okay, but I want you to go a little bit deeper. Why do they make you feel angry? Why do you feel frustrated? Okay. So maybe now we're gonna to get to answers like, they don't appreciate me. They don't listen to me. I don't feel heard. I don't feel loved. I don't feel accepted. I feel rejected. They lie to me. They are dishonest with me. I feel betrayed. Just nod your head if you have established how they make you feel. Yes? You've got the feeling? Trust me, your feelings are your map. You first got to go there. You first want to establish what it is that you are feeling. Now, based on what you're feeling, what do you need from this person? If they are not appreciating you, then you need them to appreciate you. If they are not respecting you, then you need them to respect you. If they are not loving you, then you need them to love you. If they are not accepting you, whatever it is, establish now what do you need from them. That they are not giving to you, that is creating you to feel the way that you feel. And it can be a couple of things. And this is such a simple, simple technique that we forget to do it. But every minute when somebody triggers me, the first thing I do is, what am I feeling right now? And based on what I'm feeling, what is it that I need from that person to feel different? Have you established what it is that you need from that person to feel different? Yes, Marlene, did you get it? Now, the second part of this exercise, we're not done. I want you to imagine that you had a, if you have a magic wand, then you can change anything about this person. Anything that will make this person a better person, that will make this person's life better, that will make your relationship with this person better. What would you change about this person? Now, we know we can't change people. We are just doing a little exercise. <laughs> so I just want you to imagine if you could change something about this person to make their lives better and your relationship with them better. What would you change about them? Just take a moment quickly and just, just think. If I could change anything about you that would make our relationship better, that would make your life better, that would make everything better. What would I change? So now you probably established something that you need from them and something that you want to change about them. And here is how this exercise works. Whatever you need from them, is what you are learning to give to yourself. And whatever you want to change about them is what you need to change about you. Now, people will tell me, I don't lie. That person's lying to me. I wanted to change that they are honest. I don't lie. But here's the thing. If you have attracted someone into your reality that lies to you, on some level, you are lying as well. You might not be lying to other people, but you might be lying to yourself. Now take a moment and just think about 
the minute that you started interacting with this person, was there a little tiny voice inside of you that told you, that warned you, that said, don't trust this person, something doesn't feel right. Did you listen to that little voice? You see, often we do get that guidance, but then we lie to ourselves and we say, it's my imagination. Everything's going to be okay. And then it turns out that that person does lie to you, but they are only teaching you something. So now once you understand what you need from them and that you have to learn to give that to yourself and that what you want to change about them is what you have to change about you, you'll understand what that experience is teaching you. And every experience is just an opportunity to expand, to grow, to learn. There are truly no enemies out there. The true enemy is your fears, your doubts, your resentment, your anger, your regrets. So you see, and I love how you said, who's suffering? Because you see, her anger, her right to be angry with him, is causing her suffering and, and you're right what we hold in our hearts is what we attract more of into our lives now even if that man that husband or partner moves away to timbuktu she will recreate the same experience through somebody else because the lesson was not learned you see once you understand what something is teaching you it is completed and it is done. It will come around again and again and again and again and again and again until you know what you're learning to give to yourself and what you're learning to change about yourself. And it's these simple, tiny, simple little techniques, you know, that we can apply that just makes our relationships so much easier. You never, ever, ever, ever have to look outside of you because all the answers are within you. And if you listen to your feelings, they will tell you what you need to learn to give to yourself and what you need to change about yourself. So is there anybody who have a question here regarding um, health, wealth, relationships? And there's someone with their hands up, Sonia. Okay, yes, I can see. Uh, thank you. You can speak. There you jump around. There we go. <laughs> I, I can't hear you. Can we maybe just unmute him? Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, there we go. I can hear you. <clears throat> My signal is terrible, so I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. I can hear you. Oh, fantastic. First of all, thank so, you so is, much. Is it, is it Roscoe? Yes, it's Roscoe, yeah. Long time. Long time. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you so much for, for sharing your 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 gifts with us this evening. Um as everybody knows, I'm sure, your one of your other gifts uh gifts is your your beautiful voice and your your sound channeling and sound healing. Mm -hmm. And I've got a question, a very practical question around um has anybody else been experiencing intense um, high pitch frequencies in their ears that kind of go into their brains? It's been driving me crazy. I've gone to ENTs and all sorts of things. And, you know, you being the sound lady, of course, I thought it'd be apt <laughs> for me to ask you about this. Um, yeah. So, Roscoe, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that you're asking that question. Anybody else who is experiencing this? Okay, now you understand that we are moving very, very fast through different kinds of um, um, expansions, okay, and the frequency of Mother Earth is changing, and it is a call for us to raise our vibration, to move with Mother Earth, okay. If you are experiencing high frequencies in your ears, you are not listening to something, and you 
feel perhaps on some level that you are not ready to hear it. So this is a sort of a resistance to hear what is being communicated to you. We are in a time-space reality where we are needing to let go of a lot of things. Let's go, and if I'm just tuning in, channeling into your energy, there is something that you are about to let go of or you need to let go of it for you to step forward. Okay, but there's a, a, a and, and you can correct me if I'm not tuning in correctly, but it feels to me like you're holding on to something that it is time to let go of, but you just don't want to hear that. That is not what you feel should be done right now. Now, am I correct, Roscoe? I suppose there are many things that one sometimes holds on to that one should probably not. Mm. So, there, is, yeah. there is a specific something. Um, it feels to me that it is it is pretty prominent, but you are holding on to it because you see, a part of you is very much still defining yourself by this part of your life experience and you are very committed and loyal to this okay and you have imagined and envisioned yourself with this in the future okay but what i'm hearing is is that this is the part that you have sort of outgrown okay and you need to move through that and the buzzing that you're hearing in your ears, the frequencies, the vibrations, is because you are, you've leveled up. And then there's this part that's holding on. Does it make sense to what I'm saying to you? Uh, it resonates. Yes, of course it resonates, but um, I'm obviously not wanting to hear it, right? <laughs> and here's the thing. As I'm telling you this, everything in your body is like, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to let go of this. I want this to remain. I want this. I want to save this. I'm almost getting the feeling that this can still work. Now, we don't have to go into the details of this, but there is a reason why you are holding on to this because it still gives you something, something that you think you need. Do you understand? So you're holding on to this. And as long as we're holding on to something, okay, um, it's a resistance to move into. So what's basically happened, Marlene, you also said that you're hearing that, that kind of free. Was there anybody else that was hearing the buzzing in the ears? Just Marlene? And so both of you are having to move from one vibration to the next, and you're finding yourself sort of in the middle. You see of an old you that is now having to move into a new you. Can you resonate, Marlene? And Rasko? And here's the thing. It takes incredible courage to let go of something that we think and felt has defined us for such a long time. It can almost feel like death when we have to let go of that almost like we're dying, like it comes, like something is coming to a very big ending. The, the, the thing is, the longer that you hold on to this idea, okay, or this concept or, or relationship or idea of you, okay, the more the suffering. Okay. So here's the thing. There is something. For you, it's different time frames. There's different. You've been holding on to it for a, for a different time period. Um, Marlene, I feel almost four years that you've been contemplating moving beyond this. Um, let's go. I'm not sure. Five, four, five. It feels more like five years, maybe. I'm not sure where you've become conscious that this is not exactly, but you've been trying to heal this for this period of time. You've invested a lot of time to heal this, to fix this, to sort this out. Am I correct? It is calling you to let go of it. 
you're in between frequencies now or let me call it vibrations you you, you you've moved from one vibration to another vibration the thing that you're holding on to is putting you back to the old vibration but you've already moved to the next vibration and what you are hearing now is distortion because because you you have to move to your next vibration and the noises will get worse and, and, and louder. So have you ever seen when we tune a radio station from one channel to another channel? And then it's like that until we reach it. That's where you two are. You're in the middle of these two channels. And there is, it feels to me, and I could be wrong, but it feels to me that it's someone that's not moving with you to the next vibration. And am I correct? Is it a, what is it? What is it that you can't let go of? What is it that that's holding you into this vibration? Is it is it job wise, career wise? Is it is it someone? Is it people? What is it? And Marlene, maybe you can just take your mic off on me. On yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's job wise. It's not a person. The person, the person, the person is also there in the background. Yeah. In the background. Yeah. Okay, Rasko. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe both. I don't know. A little bit both there. Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah. Marlene, you said the person's in the background. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, in terms of the person that I work. Um, so, so the two are intermingled. Uh, do, you know but I get do you have an intimate re relationship with that person? No, oh, no, 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 not at all. No. But there is a very definite. Um, do you know? It is almost like when I when I'm hearing you with that person that you're working for. Um, there is a very deep um, karmic energy there, and that is why you're staying. Okay. And am I correct if I feel like it's almost like, do you feel guilty like you owe this person? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, the thing is, is, this guilt does not serve you or that person. Because what we truly give to people is not what we do for them, but what we feel. And, and it's important, I'm going to say that again. What we truly give to people is not what we do for them, but what we feel. So if you are staying and, and, and staying there because of a guilt feeling, which then turns into resentment, it's, then it's guilt again, the resentment, it's kind of like a ping pong game between the, the emotions, you know, because um, it, that is in the end what you're giving, guilt and resentment. So um, it will be very interesting to do this in this exercise that I just gave you. What do I need from this person? What do I want to change about this person? And then you, there's a, there's a definite karmic energy that is holding you there. Okay. So if you feel like you cannot resolve it, you need to book a one-on-one -on -one session with me and we can just clear it. Okay. But it is going to take, you need to be very honest with yourself. Okay. And both um, Roscoe and Marlene, but I'm talking now to everyone as well. You know what trapped us is, is what we think and believe that we are responsible for. Okay, so it is important to look at all the things that you believe you are responsible for. You are not responsible for the joy of other people. You are not responsible to save or protect other people. Do you understand? They, and you are not responsible for how other people are experiencing this planet. Okay, everybody has access to this all that is energy of creation. Everyone has access to an abundant universe that is generous and unconditional in its giving. Nothing you have can take away from another person's abundance. Nothing you receive can take away from another person's abundance. Okay, and it is important to understand that you are not responsible for your partners, for the people you work for, 
You're not responsible for your children who's older than 18 years. You're not responsible for your children's joy and happiness. You are responsible, however, to take care of your children's physical needs and, you know, and protect them and keep them safe until they're 18 years old. But then it's time for them to, to expand and to fly. And if you are currently responsible for things that you are not responsible for, you will find that each one of these responsibilities has created a cage, like the bars of the cage. And you are starting to feel like this trapped little bird inside there, being smothered by all the things you are responsible for. Now, sometimes we've created a reality that now I'm responsible for you and you and you and you and you. And you. you see, we never really have to set a boundary if we are in alignment with who we are. But when we are out of alignment, we overcompensate and overgive and overdo for people. And then this becomes the bars. And now, unfortunately, when we found ourselves in this cage, now, now we need to set boundaries. Now we have to change things. And now we have to have the courage to say, no more, no thank you. So, Roscoe, did this help? Uh, I'd, I'd like to say yes. <laughs> but uh, perhaps something to look at for sure. Any more questions regarding this? Roscoe, I specifically want you to... to you see, because once you can let go of of what it is that that's holding you to the old vibration of you okay anything in your life that doesn't now feel good that's what you need to let go of and move beyond see Marlene, do you understand anything that is tapping your energy draining your energy is what's causing this you are not listening to your heart's call and to your purpose call okay and both of you have the ability to to influence many people's lives and it is a call this is a call for you to step into your divine timing into your life purpose thank you i resonate deeply with that thank you roscoe if you guys feel like that you cannot resolve this you, you must come and see me for a session and we can clear this, okay? Here's a little exercise. Because you are one in part with the quantum reality, instead of going to the doctors, and I'm not dissing doctors, you go see a doctor if you need to see a doctor. But here's an exercise. Every morning when you wake up or before you go to bed at night, I want to invite you to gather energy from Mother Earth and zip it up through the entire body and then expand it into the all that is energy where we were now. And I want you to imagine that you are now part of the all that is energy of creation. That energy is within you. And I want you to grab energy from this energy there. Okay. And I want you to imagine it, bringing it into into the brain, into the ears, or wherever in the body that you feel discomfort. Witness this light, this energy coming in, and do it on a daily basis, okay? And repeat, my body is a miraculous healing organism that is designed and programmed to heal itself. I now release anything that is blocking perfect hearing, perfect health to flow. Take care of it. It is done. And you keep witnessing this energy just coming in and coming in. You, when you hear the sound again, you just know. You just say, I'm trusting that this is healing. I am healed. If we listen to teachers, beautiful masters like Jesus, Jesus said, if you believe you are healed, you are healed. Anything, the only thing that causes 
this ease in the body, this comfort in the body, okay, is congestion, when something isn't flowing. So if something is not flowing mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, if something is out of balance, then the body will start talking and speaking, okay? And it is just inviting you to create balance and to allow flow, circulation to happen again. So often, you know, we will experience little blockages. I myself am experiencing some physical blockages. And I understand it has been created because I have not been in tune with who I am. Okay? Whenever we are out of harmony with our true self, with our path, with our purpose, with our vibration, then something physical can manifest. So meditate, become quiet, connect with that, that, that state of beingness, with that all that is energy, and say, I am willing. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to hear. I'm willing to release and let go. Make me conscious of where I'm holding on to and what needs to be let, you know, what I need to let go of. Now, is there, is there people here who are struggling to make decisions in life? Can I, can I give you a little yeah. exercise? Can I help you a little bit with exercise? Just a little something that you can apply that can help you make a good decision. Yes, you, you, you would like to hear this? Okay. So I want you to, to close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And I want you to really move into your body, feel your body. And I want you to think of a decision that you have made in your life that has been a miraculously good decision. <laughs> a decision that you are very chuffed and very fulfilled and satisfied about, okay? So just imagine Remember, remember a decision you made in the past that really worked well for you. Not your head if you can remember it. Even if it's just something tiny that you bought that turned out to be fabulous. Just want you to feel that feeling, yeah? Keep your eyes closed. I want you to feel in your body. How does it feel in the body? Access the feeling in the body. You've made a really good decision. Access the feeling. Can you feel like your body is almost elevating, almost rising up? You feel yourself grinning. It's like it's uplifting. It's inspirational. Can you feel it? I want you to feel it in your body. Where do you feel it? It's sort of in the heart coming up to the throat, right? But maybe for you it's a different place, but that's usually how it feels. I want you to remember that feeling. Remember it now. Then I want you to think of a decision that you made that was not such a good decision. Access the feeling. Just think of a decision that you regret and you go, oh, that was not a good decision. Something that you think you should not have done. I want you to feel that feeling. Can you feel it's almost like a sinking sensation? It's becoming heavy very important to, to, to access these feelings and to know these feelings, okay? Now that you know the difference between the feeling of when you made a really good decision and a bad decision, okay? I just wanted you to access those feelings. Now I want you to think about the really good feeling, the really good decision. So I want you to, to, to see did you make that decision from a place of fear or was it a fear that you had to overcome in other words did you make the decision and you were in a place of desperateness and fear or did you make the decision but you had to overcome a fear with that decision which one was it from a place of fear or having to overcome fear okay I bet you that it was a fear that you had to overcome, correct? Good. 
I want you to go to the decision that you made that was a really bad decision. And I want you to feel it. Did you make that decision from a place of fear, doubt, desperateness? Or was it a fear that you had to overcome? So you can see what I'm saying. The good decision usually is the one of fear. The fear is going to be there, guys. We're going to have to understand that fear is a, is a companion that travels with us because we are in a space of time and we have thoughts. You, you need to understand something about fear. Fear cannot exist when there is no thought and when there's no time. Think about it. It is always when you have time, either the future or the past, but mainly the future, and you have thoughts about how is this going to turn out. So fear is basically just all the thoughts about what could happen yeah, in the future. So if you take time and thought away, there is no fear. Does that help? So now back to decision making. First place that you want to come to when you make a decision is to get to that place of beingness. That place of wholeness where I took you in the beginning of our conversation. Yes? So you first access that pure space of beingness. And I promise you, when you're there, the first thing you will hear is, it does not matter what you decide, everything will be okay. Before you make any decision, you need to know that it doesn't matter what I decide, I'm going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Things will work out for me no matter what I decide. And I tell you, that is the truth. Everything will be okay. And you first want to access that really calm feeling of it doesn't matter. So you detach from the decision. You see, now you, it doesn't matter. Whatever I decide, it's going to be okay. You first have to access that feeling of calm and knowing that everything, that is trust. That's acceptance. Yeah? And then from that place, you start feeling the, 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 the decisions. Now, maybe you have two options, maybe there's more, but you tune into them and you feel them. The one that makes you go up and rise up like that. Yeah. The one that's a fear that I have to overcome. No decision from a place of fear and desperateness can ever turn into something great because it's origin, origin from, from fear already. Does that help you with your decision making? No? Good. So we, we, we connect with that all that is energy, always. Okay? Always first thing before we, before we react, before we make a decision, we first have to access that pure awareness, pure consciousness space. So I'm not sure what your name is. Is it iPad number five? <laughs> it, I don't know why. My name is Rhonda. Rhonda Fellows. Rhonda, <laughs> lovely to connect with you. Did that help you? Yes, thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All righty. Guys, don't be shy. Is there anybody who wants to ask me something? Rian? Um, I think with regards to work and stuff like that, um, I'm going through a phase of uh, um, selling the company and, and that's put quite a bit of strain on me. Um, and and uh, with Roscoe's buzzing in the ears, I think that's obviously the next phase. So it's, it's, it's yeah. I've, I've got to start listening to myself and, and follow or, or moving to the next level. I think it is. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, here's the thing when we are leveling up. It takes a tremendous amount of trust. Okay. And it is important that we on a daily basis connect with this all that is energy. And, and, and you can call it God, source, any, whatever you want to call it. But it is within you and you are a part of it. It is not separate from you, okay? 
And if you connect in your mornings with that space and ask to be guided, ask and you will receive. You see, you are the receiver and God is the giver. This energy gives, but you have to become mindful of what you are asking. And what you are asking is the thoughts that you are thinking. I want you to imagine a source that is unconditional in its being. It just flows. It just flows. It's just energy flowing unconditionally, generously. But it flows in the direction that your thoughts are focused on. So if you say, I am healthy, this energy says yes. If you say, I am sick, this energy says yes. If you say, I'm successful, this energy says yes. If you say, I'm a failure, this energy says yes. That is why it's incredibly important that you become conscious of what you believe. Because, you see, you have received free will. And this energy cannot give to you what you are not ready and willing to receive. And if on some level you believe that you are um, not worthy or deserving or not good enough or you know whatever it is that you might believe about yourself it will honor it because you have free will until you free yourself and there is no one here that can save you and there's no one here that can give you permission to receive and quite often we are still the young children that have given our power to a mother or a father waiting for them to say, it is your turn now to receive. You know, you are now good enough to receive. I am proud of you. I acknowledge you. I notice you. I see you. I hear you. Become conscious of where you gave your power to an authority figure. And when we are born, into this planet with the mother and the father we often look at them as gods they teach us everything which we unfortunately have to unlearn <laughs> but we believe them sometimes you see and even if we become conscious and, and disagree with what they're saying we could still on a genetic level believe what they told us and what they said you know and when we are brave enough to then venture into a direction and things then turn out bad you go oh see i should have listened to them i should have stuck to what i've known and what was safe and what was secure but the, whatever is happening that is not serving you is only happening because you still believe on some level that they were right see they were right i believe that certain things happen for a reason and we are so used to our comfort level that we don't want to move into the new levels or new phases in our lives and um this is what makes well it scares me or yeah you know, scares me is the selling of the company because it's it's something that i'm com comfortable in and i know what i do and now all of a sudden the next phase is up and what now you know i, I don't have anybody to, to to balance these type of things it's it's all my my decision and my thoughts yeah and so Rian, that is a very very scary place to be when we do not know what is going to happen anything is possible maybe this line can help you you know the unknown is just you moving deeper into yourself. So truly, it's just you moving deeper and deeper and deeper into yourself. Do you have a family and children to look after? Oops, no, I'm just a single dad. No, 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 the family, just my, that's all that's left of the whole family is just my, myself and my daughter. And your daughter and, and 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 are you responsible of her uh taking care of her uh yes ma'am she's leaving the country in a year's time to study overseas so okay. it's so she, i'm the only person left here so she'll then be over 18. yes ma'am and so here's the thing you're on the brink of a whole new phase right your daughter is leaving and then it's just you and they should taken care of for the studies, but you know, it's a really nice thing for parents to, to provide for the kids when they go and study. 
you know, but a lot of us had to figure things out ourselves. Nobody gave us a, you know, the help. <laughs> we are very generous with our children. <laughs> yeah. But some of us just had to like leave home and figure things out. Yeah. Or if you didn't get a bursary, you can't go and study. But she's taken care of with that. Yeah. She can go and study and she's leaving overseas. Yeah, the, the, the whole in-laws are staying in Ireland, so she's moving there. So, and she's, um, she's, ma she's married? Um, the ex-wife or my daughter? No, my daughter is, is leaving school now and then she's immigrating to Ireland. Okay, and how old is she? My daughter is uh, 17, leaving next year. Okay, and this is a big thing, has she been staying with you? Yes. Okay, so... I just have, um, my, my daughters are 16 years old and they just uh, relocated to Amsterdam to go and live with their father, to go and finish grade 10, 11 and 12. Now, when, when my daughters came to me, so their father has been telling them for the last eight years, there's no future for them in this country. And uh, so, and they believed that. And because he believed it, everybody that he knows will show him the proof of what he believes. You must understand, whatever you believe about life, you will see the proof of that. So because in his reality, he believes there's no future for children. There, you know, his reality proved it to him, all his friends, children can't get work, okay? My reality is a little bit different because I believe things differently. And so I see people prosper and I see um, uh, my friends, children having opportunity. My children chose to believe their father because I've never really gone out of my way to impose my beliefs on my children. I want them to make up their own minds about everything. And I've always told them that they have a choice in everything. But one thing that I can tell you when you leave so much room for your children to make their own decisions and to make up their own minds about things, they can sometimes become terrified because there's no one telling them what to do. And then they become, you know, my, my daughters are um, little warriors. I mean, they're always worrying about everything because I don't worry, you know. I didn't, I didn't worry if they get up in the morning, go to school or don't, or, you know, it's your choice. And so they've become so uh, committed and, and um, you know, reliable. And <laughs> it's wonderful. I've never had to tell them to clean their room or do their homework because they are you know, because I've, I've left them too much space, but that made them feel a little bit fearful. So they've chosen, they said, they came to me and said, we want to move with that. They think that that's where they're going to find the structure. And I, I said to them, the first time they said to me, we want to move with that to Amsterdam. I said, is this, are you sure this is what you want? This is what you guys want? And they said, yes, I've tripped it. And so all three of them moved with their father in June. Um, and school started in September. And I'm getting it every day. Well, this is so hard. This is so challenging. This is so just, all we do is study. Our school is from eight or four in the morning. And I'm like, oh, in the afternoon. And, I'm, and, and just one time I said, but remember, you chose this. And they're like, mm -hmm, you know, you know, don't, you know, don't talk about us about that. <laughs> but they did choose it. But letting go of our children is one of the greatest gifts that we can give them. You see, believing in them, believing in them. But when they do leave, Leon, your life is going to change because the things you used to do, and it's surprising because some part of you don't think that you live for your daughters or your daughter, but when they go, then you realize you have actually designed your whole world around them. And now you have all this free time and you have all this space and nothing really needs to change in your life because like you said it's comfortable but there is something that doesn't feel good anymore right and this is why the changes come knocking and if you stay in that comfortable space it is going to start getting uncomfortable and uncomfortable and you've probably seen that coming in little uncomfortableness come you know it's not big but then you know but something's got to give, something's got to change. And if we hold on, like Marlene and Roscoe, too long to something, then it manifests physically, you know. 
um, do, you, do you understand? So holding on too long, but then again, what do I do? Now, leaving a comfortable space. I so love it that you asked that question. Uh, this is a company, this is a business that does well. And, and now I have to, like, I don't have to, but I can feel it's time. Something must shift, you know? There's, and, and so now I have to I have to sell this company, maybe sell my home, maybe move to a new place, um, you know, because he, your world has opened itself up. And you'll see the longer you're there, more things will fall away. And it will almost feel like you're losing things, but you're not. Everything is leaving so that you can step into the new place. And the most scariest thing is to step into the future because what is going to happen so what is needed for us to step into a future that is unknown because most people here are probably in their 40s uh, late 30s 40s 50s yeah i'm 52. rian how old are you snap 52. <laughs> The, the minute you move into the crown chakra, okay, which is ages 14 uh, from, uh, from, so okay, let me just go through them. One to seven is when we do the root chakra. When we do the sacral chakra, seven to 14. 14 to 21, we move into the, into the solar plexus. Okay, and then from 21 to 28 into the heart chakra, 21 to 28 is, uh, from 28 to 35, we move into the throat chakras where we express and we build up and we're starting to become successful. Up to 42, we've built up a nice, uh, you know, empire for ourselves. Everything is good. But then from 42, Matt, now we're moving into our third eye and then we're going up from 49 into the crown chakra. Now, the root chakra is at the base of the spine. What blocks it is fear. Okay. The sacral chakra is just below the belly button. What blocks it is guilt. Marlene. Then we go into the solar plexus. What blocks it is shame. Okay. Then we're going into the heart. What blocks it is grief. Then we go into the throat chakra. What blocks it is the lies that we tell about ourselves. I'm not good enough, da da da. Or the you know the lies we tell. The, the third eye is blocked by illusions now that's when people become spiritually but then they get swept away by all the dramas you know and all the theories and you know and we have to learn to to discern truth okay and to be able to see through the illusions and then the crown chakra what blocks the crown chakra and that is when you're in your 50s from 49 into your 50s okay this what blocks it is our attachments and this is the phase of your life that you will be in where you can start realizing i've got to let go of this i don't want to but and if you don't it just all goes away like i cannot explain to you how much of what i've had just went away and the more I looked at my cookie jar emptying, empty, I got so fearful that I actually also did manifest a physical something in my body. Because for a long time, all I did was looking at my cookie jar emptying, 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 <laughs> emptying, that I forgot that I live in an abandoned universe, that things keep coming in, keeps coming in. And I was stuck in that for, for, for quite a long time. Okay. Detachment. Everything that we attach to limits us. The idea that you have of yourself limits you. Any idea that you have of yourself, how you define yourself right now limits you. It is incredibly important to know that you are none of this. You are not your body, you're not your mind, you're not what you've achieved up, up now. You're not the car you drive or the house that you have. And if I start taking all of these things away and you get really, really scared, know that you are really, really attached. Okay, and, and we are all attached. We are like, I know that I also, I'm gonna move. I will move to Cape Town. I've been moving to Cape Town for five years, <laughs> but I'm still in Joburg in my house because I lived in this beautiful house for 
23 years. I do not have to sell this house. I do not have to move. It's comfortable. Everything's comfortable. I know what I have here. It is safe. But something in my soul is saying, move. And you've heard that call. Now, what does it take? It takes a, a tremendous amount of courage to change something at the age of 52. Because you think, wow, do I still have the energy like when I was a young person to build up another company, to build up another something? It took so much work. It took so much energy. For act two in my life, do I even have the strength? You don't need the strength, Rian. You have the knowledge and the skills and the connections that you've built up for 52 years. You have the know-how. We are not starting over. We are starting something different. The difference is we are so equipped now. But we have to go beyond our fears. And those attachments that we're holding on to is the beliefs that I needed this in order to feel safe and I needed that in order to feel this. So just before Anne asked the question, I said, what was the feeling that you needed? Now, safety, security, you want to knowing that everything is going to be okay, right? I'm going to sell this and it will work out. Okay. You create that. Nothing is happening to you. I want you to imagine that you have a blank sheet of paper in front of you now. And everything that you're going to write on it will create your future. And you speak that into life. You repeat that over and over and over. And it doesn't matter what happens around you. You stay steadfast in your belief that this is what I'm going to create and this is how it will turn out. Things always work out for me. This is what I deserve. I'm worthy and deserving of this. This is where I'm heading to. This is what I want. And it will be provided. Infinite intelligence will find a way and solve all my problems. But I will follow my heart. I will follow the feeling of feeling better and better and better and better. Because that is your map. That is your map. Does that help, Rian? Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, I, I am. I'm actually not talking to you, Rian. I'm actually just speaking to myself. Aren't we always? Aren't we always? And I, I would really like to thank you guys for, for coming into my space and bringing your beautiful energies and for reflecting back to me all that is within me. I am so grateful for you. And if you want to continue our discussion and meditate with me and become quiet with me, my next Q&A is on the 9th of November. And you're very welcome to come again. If you have any questions, come join me. I'm not sure. And how long have we been online? Is it, is it time? It's um, one hour, 40 minutes. See, that seems like long enough. I feel tired. Tomorrow I'm going to have to give a nice class for three days. So... <laughs> Okay, if you have any questions and you didn't get to answer, ask it tonight, you are very welcome. Join us on the 9th of November and we'll do another q and I, I will schedule once a month. Even if we just get together, do you know that just one thought of love sending to the universe blesses everything? And I would so like it if you join me again so that we can just unite and us just being together remembering who we are and what we are a part of and that we can create beautiful realities for ourselves understand that the world is changing okay it already has if you are still living in the world where you are experiencing drama and suffering lack illness okay all that needs to happen is for you to level up okay Raise your vibration and you will experience a different world because the world is exactly what you believe it to be.
I love you, my friends. I hope to see you again on the 9th of November. Also, I'm giving a beautiful online workshop. It's a four-hour workshop on the 25th of November. And we'll send out a mail tomorrow with the link if you want to join me for that four hour. It's a beautiful, I'll, I'll give you a beautiful manual. And for four hours, we work through processes um, and uh, meditate together. And do you know what? When, when a couple of people just join together, it is so powerful. So just before we end, may I ask you to close your eyes. And I first of all want you to imagine sending love to your own body. Then imagine that love expanding into your life and to the loved ones. And then we're going to expand it to the whole of Mother Earth. Close your eyes for me and we take a deep breath in. Source Divine Love, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful gathering. That we can remember who we are and what we are a part of. That we have unconditional abundance that we can have it and receive it unconditionally, that it is safe for us to have, that we know how, when, and that it is possible to step into the future, that we know what trust feels like through your truth and perspective. Show us. If you want this download, just say yes and breathe it in. If you believe it is so, it is so. Creator, we ask for love to be sent to every cell in our body. Thank you that our bodies are balanced, aligned with pure consciousness, pure awareness, pure energy, pure love. Breathe it in. And now as I exhale, Creator, it is commanded that this love, this thought of love, be sent to my family, to my friends, to my co-workers. Breathe in more love. Creator, it is commanded that this love be sent to my neighbors, to everyone in my country, to everyone on every continent. Breathe in love. Creator, it is commanded that love be sent to the entire earth, all living beings. And just for a moment, we'll hold this thought of love for all that is. And this is how we assist this planet, by holding the frequency of joy and love within our hearts. We change everything. Thank you so much. I trust we will meet again soon. And thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night.